<laughs> Hi guys, Lou here. I'm uh, got a little uh, project going here. Scott sent me some wing screws for his restoration project, and uh, they should be uh, plated. So I'm going to plate them. And this is my plating setup. This is a solution that I obtained from Eastwood. My first kit I made myself. I bought the zinc um, chlorides and salts and all that stuff. Mixed it all together. And it's a conductive solution so that the electroplating process can go on. It's actually pretty simple. But it's kind of a pain in the ass to mix it yourself. And it cost me buying the chemicals from the supply house um, almost as much as buying an Eastwood kit. Eastwood and Caswell make these kits. So, uh, yeah, you can, uh, I think it's like 75 bucks to get a zinc plating kit from Eastwood these days. This kit is probably eight years old. I have refreshed the solution a little bit, but you really don't need to um, because as you use it, you get a high level of zinc in the solution and the transfer works just fine. So you need that. It comes with the uh, anodes, zinc anode. And I think Eastwood puts a lot of tin in with their uh, zinc. So, um, originally, a lot of parts on a Jeep were either CAD or zinc plated. CAD is uh, toxic, so they hardly use that anymore. And uh, you can plate zinc, and if you leave it dull and you don't polish it bright, then it looks like CAD and has similar protection properties. So I got a little rod to suspend, suspend the parts with. I've got a couple D cell batteries and uh, my cables, so positive and negative, some copper wire to hang the parts with, and uh, some muriatic acid. You can get that at Home Depot. It's usually in the masonry area where they use it to uh, clean up after uh, mortaring uh, bricks together. You scrub down and gets the uh, mortar off the brick. Um, but the critical part, here's one of the, the screws. So... You need to uh, have that be clean. So, I'll probably wire wheel it off as much as I can. And then to get into the inner spaces, I'll use my sandblasting cabinet and uh, blast the inner spaces. So uh, you can get it all down inside there. So once I get all the parts cleaned up, sandblasted, then I'll pour a little muriatic into this cup and give them a few minutes soak in the cup and that gets microscopic rust out of there. Then I will uh, fresh water rinse them get them good and clean. Then I will hang them from the rod, suspend them midway in the fluid, um, hang a zinc bar down the side, hook the negative, oops, the negative to the uh, part. My bad. So I'll hook that to there positive to the anode that will make the zinc leave the anode and travel through the fluid to the part 
and uh, sometimes I rotate that around if uh, if I have an object that um, is kind of preventing the zinc from traveling through the fluid and getting to the back side. That's not usually the case for something small like this. So, um, plating probably take about 15 minutes. Then I'll pull it out, rinse it off, and then I'll uh, inspect it. If it needs, if the coating isn't very thick, I will give it a quick uh, rub down because it might come out a little bit uh, uh, dull. I'll rub it down a little bit and then I'll plate it a second time and get a little thicker coat on there. And then I like to put a coat of uh, satin clear poly on it, which you can't tell once it's sprayed on there. But that buys you uh, quite a few years more life before um, Mother Nature starts attacking the zinc. You know, the zinc is sacrificial, and it will erode away first um, before you get to the base metal. That's kind of the idea. So that's the process. And uh, stand by and we'll get it going. Okay. Parts are all uh, shined up. So I'm throw them in here. I'll dump in a little muratic. I don't breathe this shit. It's nasty. It'll burn your nose. But uh, just a little rinse there. When you first put it in, you can see it really bubble sometimes. Um, that'll be reacting to the rust. And this gets into all the little tight spaces that you can't get with the sandblaster or the wire wheel. And I'll let that soak for a couple of minutes. Okay, after the soak, then I rinsed them real good, clean water, my hands are clean, um, cause skin oils and that sort of thing will tend to gunk them up and uh, not plate well. So they're fresh and clean. They can stay wet, no need to dry them, unless you're not going to plate immediately, but you want to plate immediately so you don't get that microscopic flash rust. Okay, so now they're all on my copper wire. They're not touching each other, and I'll suspend that in the fluid here. Okay, she's all set up. Um... Now, if you look down here where the wire enters that's holding the parts, it should start bubbling a little bit. I've got a lot of foam in here because I shook up the whole fluid mix because it's been sitting for quite a while. But, uh, yeah, so that needs to uh, start bubbling. And since it's not, my batteries are probably dead. So, time for new batteries. Okay, so now it's cooking, and uh, we'll give that about 15 minutes of cook time. Let's see how it goes. Here's my setup for the washers. You can see how it's all foamed up there means it's plating away. It produces a little bit of hydrogen gas, not enough to be, uh, for this small operation, uh, a flame hazard. 
Okay, there they are, zinc plated. And uh, you can buff them up and make them shine a little more if you want. Okay. So there they are drying. A quick coat of uh, clear poly um, buys you several more years of life. You know, uh, if you look at World War II photos, Jeeps in the Pacific, hardware like this with the zinc coating and no paint on it, rusted up uh, within a couple of years, but uh, the little poly coating on it, you can't tell and uh, it makes them hold up a lot better for a long time. So anyway, <laughs> there you go. Um, that's it for now. Hope that helps. And, uh, if you have any questions, message me on Facebook and I'd be happy to help out. Um, but it's a real simple, easy process. Uh, metal prep, cleanliness is probably the most important. If you got little rusty pockets and areas or grease on your fingers and that sort of thing, it won't plate. Um, that acts as a barrier and keeps it off. So, uh, um, some of the companies sell higher end kits. They cost like two, three times as much. They do a nicer job, but they're more set up for people that do it for a living um, and doing big production. I only do an occasional nut and bolt here and there that... Uh, I need it for the Jeep. So that's about it. You guys take care. We'll talk with you later.